Society is at risk from one man's invention. The side effects of this technology have been linked to an increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. I accuse Thomas Edison in the study with the light bulb. Yes, we are a sleep-deprived society and the light bulb is to blame. It has committed two main crimes. First, artificial light suppresses the sleep message that our brains release in the evening. This keeps us awake when we should be feeling tired and helps us and doesn't help us to go to sleep. Second, artificial light has allowed us to have unnaturally long days. We're constantly trying to cram more things into our lives when, ironically, this lack of sleep could be actually shortening them. We know that sleep is important. If you keep a rat awake for two weeks permanently, it dies. But nowadays, the average adult is only getting six and a half hours sleep, and this decline has occurred at the same time as an increase in levels of diabetes and obesity, which may not be such a coincidence. You see, to override our need for sleep, we activate our stress axis. This is the same response that sends adrenaline coursing through your body, preparing you for fight or flight. But long-term stress weakens your body's immune system, so you're more susceptible to disease. This response also tells our body that we need energy. So we're craving sugary, fatty foods, despite the fact that the only thing we're fighting is probably our laptop. On top of this, being tired literally makes you hungry. Our appetite is controlled by different hormones. And it's been shown that after only one week of restricted sleep, your hunger hormone has increased by a quarter, and your ability to feel full has fallen. But it's not just what you eat, or even how much, it's also when you eat. We evolved to be active in the day and rest at night. And a lot of the processes in our body operate under this 24-hour daily rhythm, including our digestive system. If you eat a meal at midnight compared to midday, you are much less efficient at processing it. This can give you prolonged high blood sugar, a characteristic of diabetes, and can also make you gain weight. I started by blaming Thomas Edison. But really, it's our own attitude. Why isn't doing an all-nighter considered as bad as, youth as smoking? We all know that smoking causes cancer, but you don't get cancer from just one cigarette. In the same way, one late night is OK, but what are the long-term effects of many? In 50 years' time, will we be suing for the health effects of shift work like we've sued for asbestos? We're constantly taught about exercise and healthy eating, but no one talks about healthy sleeping. So the next time you want to spend an hour in the gym, remember that bedtime is just as important. Bedtime and good timing. Yes, you can face the judges masked, actually. It's quite a nice way. It's like going up into front of the executioner, judges. Very much, but you said something that worried me, and you said that the uh, the uh, as sleep had gone down, so obesity rates had gone up. Mm -hmm. But as I recall, uh, the number of bananas imported after the war rose dramatically, as did the birth rate. So you could possibly claim that eating bananas caused you to get pregnant. So. <laughs> that causal and correlation thing, it's, you know, the two are not, not the same. So, you know, so... It's a potential explain, banana skin, is what you It's saying. a potential yeah. banana skin. So explain why you think the two are linked. Because actually the fact that one goes up and the other uh, yeah, doesn't I, I explain hope I, I hope cause. I acknowledge that, because I did say it might not be such a coincidence. It is largely an association, but I was talking about um, these different mechanisms that are being explored, which might explain why we are seeing that association. So you're eating the wrong foods, you're eating more, and you're eating at the wrong time as well. It, it means, though, as well, you've got this vision of people at the equator being super fit, but by the time you get to my family in Copenhagen, they're dead. <laughs> Because latitudinal controls on light means that if you've got, if you're going to a higher latitude, you're going to get less light, you're going to die. Is that the, there must, is there any correlation? Are there any studies to show where you've got 
your extended daylight hours near the equator as you move to polar regions, which, which actually verifies what you've just told We're us. We're going to have more bananas at the equator. Exactly, <laughs> loads of bananas. Super healthy. Um, I'm not aware of any studies that have looked at the differences between the latitudes, um, but there was recently one that looked at sleep deprivation and also missed time sleep as two separate things and saw a huge effect of this on our genes and gene expression and things that were changed the activity of the genes upregulated or downregulated were linked to metabolism, immunity, inflammation. Um, and that is currently one of the ideas that people have about how we might see this as a mechanism for explaining those associations. Okay. Uh, I'd like to say, uh, the, the, I thought your, the start of your talk was incredibly powerful. Having the lights off like that, because I was trying to fumble with my papers and suddenly I stopped. <laughs> I don't want to make any noise. You know, it's silent here. So I thought that was a really incredible mechanism to use. And I'm talking think you... without pictures, it's called radio. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> this radio you speak of. <laughs> so I thought that was a really, a really good way to introduce the subject. And I thought it was very powerful. Oh, okay, nice, you. powerful finish. Wake up and whoop the loop, please, for Matilda Hay.